Hi, I'm Cliff, and this is my garage, and I just bought the world's ugliest sports car. It's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the garage. And if this is your first time visiting me, thanks for dropping by. So, like I said, I bought the world's ugliest sports car. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, when I looked at this thing, I thought, oh man, that is ugly. But I ended up buying it. You ready? Here it is. This is my new to me 2006 Porsche Cayman S. Okay, now I know a lot of you guys are saying, wait a minute, Cliff. The Porsche Cayman is not an ugly car. In fact, it's one. It's a very beautiful car. And I would agree with you for the most part. In fact, I think that the Porsche Cayman is arguably the most beautiful car ever made, especially, and I'm really talking about the 987.1 version, the original Porsche came in. I think stylistically, Porsche nailed it. It's, it's almost perfect stylistically. I love the lines of this car. Uh, in the later years, it started getting boxier and it started to uh, get kind of more angular. In some ways, it's, it's, it's like, Porsche started turning into Mercedes. They, they started looking alike to my eye. I really don't like the later versions. They're not ugly. And if you gave me one, I would take it. But I really like the early models. So, why is this ugly? Well, it's not so much that it's a Porsche Cayman. It's what's been done to it. It has had a whole series of mods put on it that are either... Um, unattractive, impractical, or just plain ugly. And so we're going to be making a lot of changes on the exterior appearance of this car. And, and let me just go through the various things I do not like about this car. Now, you may like them, and that's okay. Uh, tastes are different between people. I prefer something cleaner and uh, stylish, you may like the more outrageous stuff. But again, let me just go over what I hate about the car, what I think it makes it so ugly, and you let me know what you think. So let's start with this air splitter. It's from a company called Joe Toth Composites. And when I first saw it on the Craigslist photos, I thought, Oh my gosh, that is so ugly. I just, I hate that. And uh, went ahead and bought the car anyway. I was going to just take this thing off and replace it with the stock winglets that come on the Cayman. But after a week or so, it really kind of started to grow on me in terms of its appearance. And I decided, well, I would probably keep it and get it, take off that red stripe, get it repainted to match the body color. But then in driving it around town, I realized I was constantly scraping it on driveways and entrances to businesses because it is so aggressive. It, pro it projects so far down and so far forward that I figure it wouldn't be too long before I busted it or ripped it off completely. So I went back to my original plan. I was going to pull it off and I was getting ready to order the little stock winglets that go down there to because uh, the originals are gone. But then um, on a Facebook post, I came across his announcement that he had a new version of this that was far less aggressive and, and quite frankly, I think looks a whole lot better. It looks pretty darn good. So I went ahead and placed an order. It will hopefully be here in another week to 10 days. And I'm going to put it on, check it out, and then get it painted, I think, to match the body color. 
Now, like the front air splitter, when I first saw these, uh, what are called either dive planes or canards, as some people call them, side spoilers, these also come from Joe Toth Composites. And when I, like the air splitter, when I first saw them, I thought, man, those are stupid, those are tacky, those are ugly. But I still believe that they look stupid, tacky, and ugly. And so the, these are gone. So we have a variety of issues with the headlights. Okay, first of all, there is some kind of a film on this. Um, it's like a dark, dark tint. And it's, I don't think you can see it in the, in the video here, but it's beginning to bubble and distort and uh, it, it just, it looks bad. Plus it, uh, I guess it cuts the light output. The other issue with the lights is that they start off really, really dim. I know these are not the stock bulbs because part of what I got from owner number four that he got from owner number three is a bunch of light bulbs. I, at least one of them was marked headlight. And so he changed out the bulbs from the stock, I presume were stock, to something else that I haven't had time to check out yet. The problem is that these things start off really, really dim and they take about I don't know, 15 minutes to really become bright enough to drive by. It's really a little scary during the first part of the night. And I've hardly driven at night because the lights are so bad. So we got to get rid of that film and change out the bulbs. And hopefully that will solve my headlight problems. On the front here by the, by the fog lights, they installed a couple of these LED bars, which I like in theory. But it's kind of weird that they only go halfway across. And so I don't really like that. And also we've got something bizarre going on with the fog light. It just sits there and flickers. I'm assuming the LED is wired into the same circuit as the fog light and is interfering with it. Um, I'm not sure. But my ultimate plan is I'm gonna pull the entire thing out and install a set of LED spars. One thing I do like that owner number three put in was these side marker lights. They took out the amber ones and put in these white ones. However, um, if you can see, they didn't do such a good job because the wires are hanging out here on the side. And also, I'm not sure about this. I'm thinking the side marker lights incorporated a blinker uh, for our directional signal. And this one doesn't. And that's what makes me think that, that that's the reason why I'm getting warning messages on the dash about the left, direct, the left directional signal and the right directional signal. At least I hope it's that and not the taillights causing the problems because when we get to the taillights, I'll tell you about how much I really like the taillights. So to diagnose this, I think I'm going to need to buy, I guess, at least one OEM side marker light put it in see if the error message goes away and if so i'll either put a, a second stock side marker light in for now or i'll start shopping for one that's this properly made that doesn't create the error messages one of the odder things i've found on this car is the paint protection film that's been put onto the hood and i'm not sure if it's really coming through in the video but they took PPF and they put it on in three separate strips along the hood here and, and only up to here. I, I, I don't have an explanation for this. The only thing I could possibly think of is that that's how the PPF came. It came in, what is that, like maybe six to eight inch strips for protecting the edge of a door. And that's all that owner number either probably probably three maybe four that's all they could find in terms of ppf and decided to lay it on there it's it is protection it just looks kind of weird so i'm going to pull that off and i'm not sure if i'm going to put ppf back on if i do i'm going to ppf the entire hood when owner number three picked out these wheels he made a good choice. I really like him. I like that very open spoke design that shows off those sexy
cross drilled rotors and that big red caliper. Yeah, I like these a lot. Moving on down the side here, there are several things here that I really don't like. Okay, first of all, I, and, and I'm sorry if you like them, but I think that these graphics on the side just look terrible. Uh, they just, yeah, they just look terrible. I'm going to peel those off again. It's shocking how much those things are. I think the little flag decal was like 150 or 200 bucks a pair. Just blew my mind. Now, I am still a little up in the air on these side skirts. I, I, I definitely am not a fan of this carbon fiber looking little trim piece here that seems to be been applied over the the seam now i don't know if that's because the seam is really unsightly and poorly fitted or owner number three he simply i know he liked carbon fiber and so that's just simply one more touch of carbon fiber he threw on there uh, the skirts themselves, I'm not sure. I definitely want to get them repainted so they actually match the body color. He, owner number three, had the skirts and the rear wing supposedly painted to match the body color. I forget the company. It may have been Car ID. I don't know about that. But they did a very bad job. And basically, that's the completely wrong color to be matching this th this color here which is seal gray metallic that that's a much darker gray I'm gonna pull off that trim strip I'm going to then take a look and see what the seam looks like and there's a good chance I'm going to simply pull those side skirts off and sell them now here's something where a lot of people disagree with me and that's okay but I think that these side carbon fiber scoops I, I think that they're ugly. I've seen uglier. There, there's an, uh, a guy I've seen on the Facebook groups. He, he sells these really big scoops. They're just they're hideous. These are not that big, but they still remind me of my friend Daryl, who has like really big ears that poke out. <sighs> these are Daryl ear scoops. I, I swear. Um, I don't like them. I don't like the carbon fiber thing. What's really kind of surprising is I really looked at it. They appear to be real carbon fiber, not just something printed to look like carbon fiber, which I guess that would be, uh, that would explain the $450 price tag that owner number three paid for them. But those are gone. I've actually already found someone out in California. We're going to do a swap. I'm going to send him these scoops. He's going to send me his OEM scoops, or not, they're not scoops, the OEM air inlet grills and some cash. And so that's going to be taken care of. In fact, as soon as I finish this video, I got to pop those bad boys off, throw them in a box and mail them to California. Owner number three got these taillights off of eBay, but they were not cheap. He paid a little over $400 for the pair, but I really like them. They're unlike most, well, any other taillights I've seen out there because they primarily look silverish. They do light up red at night, and you can see some of the red in there, but mainly they, they look silver, and they blend in with the body so well my i'm definitely keeping these my only quibble on them as i wish they were a hair darker so i'm going to put a light smoke tint over them now as much as i love some parts of this car this is the piece i absolutely despise this wing completely destroys the flow of the of the cayman's body i mean it is this is an atrocity that needs to go as quickly as possible. Now, like I was saying before, owner number three had a carbon fiber fetish. Uh, he wrapped the, the, the rear spoiler in uh, some sort of a cheap carbon fiber looking vinyl. It's, it's peeling off. It's a really poor job of wrapping it. He also apparently was very, very proud of the fact that this is a Cayman S 
And so he got in there and painted it himself red. He didn't do a very good job though because the paint has gotten over onto the body work and just, it, it's really. All right, so here you can see a couple of things I really like about the car. One is that rear diffuser. Once again, from our friends at Joe Toth Composites, it really adds a nice aggressive look to the back. Now, I don't know what's going on right here with this tape or something. Covering it up, that's that's really kind of crappy looking. And I'm going to see if I can do something about that. The other thing that is just very, very wonderful is the Borla exhaust that's been installed on this. I really like the sound of it. I think it uh, it really adds to the... Uh, to the car, I just, it's, it's a really nice touch. On the other hand, you can see that hideous red stripe continuing around, which it, it's, it's peeling off anyway, so I need to get rid of that. I just, I, I don't like that at all. Okay, so that's the laundry list of things that are wrong with the exterior of the car. Oh, I just realized looking here, I forgot one. This stripe across the top is made of a layer of uh, color change car film or car wrap with a Porsche decal stuck on it and then covered with PPF. At first I thought it was a nice uh, tint strip for when the sun's getting low in the sky it keeps it from blinding you but I got in the car and it's opaque so yeah that's that's another thing that um, it, it, that, that's got to go. So Let's talk about things that are wrong with the interior or other things wrong with the car that make it the ugliest sports car in the world. Um, first of all, I only got one of these. This is the key. Okay, at the time, I didn't do a very good job of explaining the whole deal with getting a replacement or an extra key made for your Porsche. You need three parts to this. One is the head of the key. This has the buttons and the electronics and the battery inside of it and let it communicate with the car. Okay, then there's the shank, which is the actual metal part that goes into the ignition. The third part is the programming, and that has to be done by a Porsche dealer. So you can go and you can buy a head off the internet. This is one that the previous owner has sitting around. It's kind of weird. All it is is the button. There, there's no electronics or battery inside of this. Basically, it's useless except to open the door. But this is the kind of thing that you would buy off the internet. You can also buy the shanks all by themselves. You can buy blank ones, and then you can. There are companies that will cut the key for you. It, it, there's like a, a channel cut into the side of it. Um, there are even companies that will do it. All you have to do is send them a scan or a photo of the shank on your current key and they can duplicate it. Now I couldn't find one here in the United States. The only ones I could find were over in England. So yes, you can, <clears throat> you can buy the head off the internet. You can buy the shank off the internet. You may even be able to get the shank cut. The thing is that nobody, absolutely nobody, but a Porsche dealer can program it. And that you have to take it. So, I was I did a lot of looking around. I could find replacement heads and replacement shanks and I could only get it for maybe maybe $50 at most. Basically it was $25 less than what the Porsche dealer was going to charge me. You still have to take it to a Porsche dealer to get it programmed. With one exception, there are a couple of companies I found that they could they claimed they could make you a Porsche key including the programming but you had to take your car to them or remove I'm not sure if it was the ECU out of the computer out of the car or one of the other control modules but you had to remove an electronic box from your car and send it to them and they were located nowhere near me so that was the only option for me and it's an option I just wasn't going to take I could just imagine this thing getting lost in transit and how much it would cost and the hassle of 
getting it replaced through Porsche because I pro presume it would have to also be programmed. So that really wasn't an option. So really, to get a replacement or a, an extra key made, I can go to the Porsche dealer and I can pay $465. Or I can go through a lot of hassle, a lot of risk, and maybe save $100. And to me, that's not worth it. Uh, for 100 bucks, I'm going to go to the Porsche dealer and I'm going to let them take care of the whole thing for me so there's no questions about, hey, this is kind of a bogus head or the shank's not quite right. No, just there's a certain point where I'm not willing to save that money. So there, that's a better explanation. Back to the video. $465. Ouch. Okay, so what else is wrong? There are a variety of dead bulbs on this car. Um, probably half the bulbs in the interior and the trunk and the rear storage space are dead. Those have all got, got to be replaced. Um, the center light over the, uh, in the in the middle of the front uh, roof, the, the plastic cover on that is broken off. Oh, let's see, the cup holder sticks. Sometimes it doesn't come out. That's going to have to be hopefully just fixed, not replaced. I, I just, I haven't looked to see how much that is. I'm scared to. Oh, let's see. The, the passenger side window. Now, what happens when you, when you pull the door, the door handle, the, the door, the, uh, the window drops down a little bit out of a, a channel and then you can open the door. When you close it, the window goes back up and the, and the glass goes into that channel to give you a good seal. Well, on the, dry, the driver's side, it works fine. On the passenger side, it drops down, but when you close it, it doesn't go back up. So I'm thinking that the trigger in the handle is fine because it knows when the door is opening. It just doesn't know when the door is closed. So I'm hoping it's nothing more than just a micro switch somewhere that lets the ECU know that the car, uh, the door is closed. And we'll see what happens with that let's see uh, the sound system is, is really pretty good but there's a bad rattle in the door the driver's side door uh, the buzz is really bad on bass notes kind of have to figure what's going on on there and I really got worried when I first got the car home and I thought okay let's uh, go see what the fuel filler cap is like and I go over there and I can't figure out how to how to get it open because I Everything I've read said you just push on the right-hand side of the door and it flips open. Well, what's happened is there's a solenoid in there that it retracts a pin when you unlock the car. And when you lock the car, it pushes the pin forward and, and locks the door. And what was happening was that solenoid is not pulling that pin back. If, if you need to open the door, fuel filler door in an emergency, I did discover that in the hinge area of the passenger side, there's a little ring on a, on a, um, on a tether. You pull it and that is connected to the, to the solenoid, to the pin, and you can pull the pin back by pulling on that ring. So if you ever get stuck, that's, that's your uh, solution. Uh, I'm just going to have to buy another solenoid, I guess. I presume that's it. I'm going to check for loose connections first. Um, don't know what that's going to cost yet. So, you may be asking yourself, all right, Cliff, you've got this laundry list of things on the car that it had mods you, you hate, or there are things that are messed up and need to be fixed. If the car is so ugly, why did you buy it? Well, the answer is, A, I've always wanted a Porsche, and I especially love the Caymans. I originally had thought about getting a Boxster, but I just didn't like the lines. Um, it just didn't look as good. People will say that a Cayman is nothing more than a Boxster with a, with a, a hard top on it. That is not true. This, in silhouette, these two cars look completely different. The, um, in all honesty, the Boxster reminds me of a souped-up Miata. Whereas the Cayman is absolutely gorgeous. Now, coming back to why did I buy this car? Well, I had been looking for a Cayman for a while. And when this one came up, I got over my initial revulsion 
at its appearance. And I did some checking. I, I ran a Carfax on it. It, it came back really good, lot, a good maintenance history, uh, no accidents. It looked like it had been well taken care of. And the average book value was around $21,000. And so then I looked at all the other mods, both that I hated and that I liked. Um, for instance, the, the Borla exhaust and the uh, Joe Toth front air splitter. And I came up with a total price of there is about, well, there's a little over $6,000 worth of mods on this car. Now, you can look at it a couple different ways. You can say, well, I'm going to take the 6000 complete because that would is what it would cost to get those uh, options or get those modifications for this car or you could look at it and say well I'm only going to add on what it would take me to buy those used and that's the route I went I said my general rule of thumb is that if something is used if it's like untouched in the box you're looking at around 75 or 80 percent of the new cost i'd be willing to pay for that if it's been taken out and barely used 65 to 75 percent somewhere in there and if it's got normal wear it's it's a product that's been put to use and has normal wear and tear on it my rule of thumb is 50 percent of what it would cost to buy me for me to buy it new and so I took the 50% figure which works out to right around three thousand dollars so in my mind this car was worth around twenty four thousand dollars the way it was now then I factored in the fact I had to get another key uh, the window tint on this car window tint is measured as a percentage of visual, visible light transmission. In other words, the light coming in, how much of it makes it through the tent. I like a car with around 70% VLT. The legal limit in Florida is 28%. The first time I drove this car at night, I was like, oh my God, I can't see out the sides. I mean, I literally, I, I felt like I was blind. And so I got my Lux meter and I did, I tested it. This film is 5% VLT only. And then when you take, you factor in the, the VLT loss in the glass itself, only 4% of the light was making it through into the interior that you could see out of this tent. Okay, folks, I'll admit it looks good. But 4% VLT is stupid dangerous. I mean, it really is. And so, again, once I finish this video, the side scoops are coming off to ship to my new friend out in California. The second thing that's gonna, probably going to happen is to tear out that window tent. And I've got a quote of around $300 to put on proper tent. And uh, a couple other things and then the other... I basically, I'm coming up with about a thousand dollars worth of repairs and fixes that need to be done. So, about twenty-three thousand in my mind is what we can pay for this car. Owner number five was asking eighteen thousand dollars through shrewd negotiation this car ended up costing me thirteen thousand dollars i only thirteen grand and that is why i bought the ugliest sports car in the world is because i got it cheap it's going to be cheap to fix and when i'm done it will be the most beautiful sports car in the world well, that's it for today in the garage. I hope you enjoyed this, that you found it informative. Please put a like on the video and uh, subscribe to the channel. And that way you'll get notified every time I post new content here in Cliff's Garage. Bye-bye.